Hi, my lovely children of the corn. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well. I'm going to read chapter 11 today. Same old, same old. Um, for those of you who are listening, if you are interested in joining your book, uh, send a letter of interest or uh, inf uh, information about yourself to Mrs. Gumeritz, Samantha Gumeritz at the school. I'm going to try to send um, some more information over the weekend. So again, if you're interested in your book, contact her. She is an eighth grade social studies teacher too. All right. So here it goes. Chapter 11. It took me three hours to walk to the city, but it felt like minutes. I wanted to catch the next bus north at noon. Then I'd be slightly ahead of the timetable set by Don Clemente. I wandered around, peering into shop windows and pull it, pushing my way through the crowded stalls in the Mercado. And a Mercado is an open market. The city was a crosswords for steady, a steady stream of people headed north, south, east, and west. Cars and trucks behind uh, belched uh, black exhaust that burned my eyes. The taxi drivers blasted their horns and a loud whoop whoop of music blared from the speakers of other cars. Mid-morning, I stood in the shade cast by the giant walls of the cathedral and pulled the last of the tacos de cabrito, the uh, tacos made out of goat, uh, goat meat, out of my bag. The tortillas had turned hard and cold, but I ate every bite. Two hours early, I found my way to the bus station. What if the seats were sold out? I didn't think I could stand to wait for the next, up, next bus. I wasn't the only worried one. Dozens of anxious travelers sat side by side, their belongings stacked at their feet. I bought my ticket, found a seat on a worn wooden bench, and settled down to wait. An older couple sat across from me. They propped their, le uh, their legs up on a huge bulging suitcase. He wore an old black suit, the shoulders dusted by dirt. She too wore black, a long dress with shiny buttons. In her hand, she held a small photograph. Its edges tattered and worn. She caressed the face on the photo uh, with her index finger. I decided they must be going to the funeral of their only son. A young father and mother near my age sat on top of two boxes tied together with rope. They passed the baby back and forth, but it cried nonstop anyway. Two, uh, two more string bags held some fruit and drinks, a bean pot, and a morcajete. That's the little br br black thing with the little uh, mortar that you crush up chilies to make salsa. A box of soap. This was everything they owned in the world. I thought they must be heading to La Capital to try out a new different life. They'd still be poor there. It would just be a different kind of poor. I felt quick and light and alert. Everyone else seemed burdened, loaded down. My backpack and my, po uh, my pouch weighed no more than a feather. The bus finally pulled up to the station. The mother and father with the baby stowed their boxes, monitored the, uh, mounted the stairs, and sat at the front. An India, an indigenous person, wearing a bright multicolored skirt and blouse slid into the second seat. A shawl covered most of her uh, face for modesty. She grabbed the ends and pulled it tightly around her neck. She carried only a small string bag. I decided she was going to go help her sister, who had just had a baby. She's got an imagination. I made my way to the back of the bus and claimed a seat next to a window. Three young men settled behind me. They didn't wear uh, their traditional pants and shirts, but I could tell that they too were indios, indigenous people. Riquis, maybe. Zapotecos. Mextecos. They sat shoulder to sh shoulder speaking on, uh, in their own language. Maybe they didn't want to speak Spanish. Maybe they didn't speak Spanish. Probably they just didn't want me to understand. Two more young men grabbed a seat in front of me. One wore a New York Yankees cap facing backwards on his head. His t-shirt had faded cartoon drawing of a square-faced kid with spiky yellow hair. The other man wore an Oakland Raiders uh, cap pointed forward, and a ragged sweatshirt with a Notre Dame uh, logo. What's the name of the guy that told us about, they told us about? 
Do you think we can find them? What if we can't find them? One asked anxiously. Would you stop asking me that? The other replied. I already told you ten times. He paused and used the annoyed tone of an older brother, the one I used with Elena when I wanted her to shut up. I guess by their accents, they were from Guatemala or maybe Honduras. A uh, black man sat into the seat across the aisle. He was traveling alone and light, like me. I nodded at him slightly. He returned the nod with his own, adding a shy smile. He carried one small backpack held together in some places by duct tape and in others by uh, crude hand stitching. Out of this, he pulled a portable CD player. He filled, fiddled with the earphones, adjusted the volume, and settled back listening intently. Who was he? Where was he from? I finally decided he was a tourist, probably not as poor as he looked. Several other men entered the bus, each with signal. Most traveled alone. I counted a total of 15 young men, including myself. I bet all of us had the same destination, somewhere across La Línea. Here we were together, close enough to touch. There, up north, one might go to Chicago, another to Atlanta or Michigan. What about the other places I'd heard about? Oregon? Yakima? Oklahoma? Some place called Little Rock? Some were cities, it seemed. Maybe others were states, I wasn't sure. There was California, of course. I knew all about California. Finally, yet another man sat right next to me. I let out one big sigh. I wanted to be alone so I could stretch out a little and sleep. I knew I needed some rest and I, could, I needed the rest when I could. But he was barely seated before he started talking, a fast flowing river of words as if he'd been starved for conversation. Hola, me llamo Javier. Hi, my name's Javier. You can call me Javi, he began. What's your name? I'm from El Salvador. Uh, you're from here, right? He paused only long enough to kick his backpack underneath the seat in front of me. Uh, he had silver hair and deep wrinkles around his mouth and the corners of his eyes. I looked closer. He was a lot older than anyone else on the bus. This is a good bus. I can tell. I can tell already. You can always tell by the driver. He continued without taking a breath. I've been on two that broke down. Where are you going? Maybe we could go together. It's boring to travel alone. He looked at me hopefully. Don Clemente had warned me not to give away my route or my contacts. Besides, I didn't want the burden of another human being. So I lied. I'm going to La Capital, to the capital, to stay with my brother and sister-in-law. Javier's shoulders slumped in disappointment. But with, within minutes, his friendly talk started up again. Over the next hour, I found out he came from the mountains of El Salvador, somewhere he used to work on a big coffee plantation. He left behind his wife and two children. I had no choice, he explained. The coffee prices went in the toilet. With no work, no money, what was I supposed to do? I'm going north to New York where my brother works in a restaurant. He can get me a job. Within a short amount of time, I'll have enough money to send for my family. He paused momentarily to look at me closely. You must be about the same age as my boy Eduardo. He wanted to come with me, but of course he had to stay and help out the family. He wasn't happy about it. You're not going to the capital, are you? Javi said Javi suddenly. It wasn't really a question. He hadn't believed my story. I've always been a bad liar. You could come with me, you know, he offered. He waited for me to answer. This is my second try. I've learned a few things, and sometimes it's good to have someone to watch your back. I said a silent thanks to Don Clemente. With his people and his coyote, I didn't need anyone else. If Javier had already tried once and failed, I'd be better off alone. The last thing I wanted was an old man tagging along with me. How much help could someone like that be anyway? Gracias, I murmured. 
I've got my own plans. Okay, you guys know the drill. Questions on the description part. If any of you have any questions about uh, your book, let me know and I'll try to get something out this weekend. Um, for those of you watching it on a timely manner, have a great weekend. Uh, we're in May. We're in the final countdown. Mwah!